Are you tired of flashlights always letting you down? Help me. Are you over wandering aimlessly in the dark? Well, fear no more, because I have the solution for you. Hi, I'm you. Me? Are you ready for the answer to all your lighting problems? It's time to say goodbye to those lacking lumens and say hello to whoosh, the portable sun. You see, with 200 watts of portable LED power and built-in lenses, you won't be ever left in the dark again. The two built-in cooling fans help prevent overheating, so go ahead and keep it on as much as you'd like. This monster flashlight boasts a 12-volt, 20-amp-hour lithium-iron phosphate battery for extended portability. When the battery's low, go ahead and plug it into its power supply to keep it shining all night long. It also includes a convenient port for charging the battery back up to full. And speaking of charging, there's an additional USB and USB-C ports that's included to power your tech items on the go. A handy voltmeter is also visible to let you know your battery status. And when the main LEDs are powered on, a live backlit display of the power consumption can be seen from the top. All this controlled by heavy-duty illuminated switches to help you see where they're located in the dark. On each side, there's a large air ventilation holes and clear vinyl windows for your viewing pleasure. And all this inside a beautiful wooden enclosure with heavy-duty handle to bring it along with you. So the next time you need a flashlight, go ahead and make yourself a real one. And I'll show you how. The first thing we're going to need for this build is the LED chips. I got two of these 100 watt Cobb LEDs. They're rated for 30 to 34 volts and 3 amps. And they're pretty small for their package for how bright they're going to be. Next we have a big aluminum heat sink. It's a pretty big chunky thing. It's got big aluminum fins on it. It's got two cooling fans on the back of it and it runs on 12 volts which is perfect for our battery. It also comes with some reflectors and lenses which is going to help focus the light in front of the LEDs and I just think the lenses look so cool. We also have to have a pretty large size battery to run this setup. It's a 12 volt 20 amp hour battery and it's capable of putting out 25 amps which is more than enough for this project. We're also going to use a simple DC plug to charge up the battery back to full. And since I'm using such a large battery, I decided to get this. It's a 12 volt to USB and USB-C port that you can charge devices. It also has a built-in voltmeter display, which is really handy if you want to gauge how much life is left in your battery. I got two of these heavy duty switches. They're each rated for 12 volts and 20 amps, which is perfect for this project. And they have the nice backlit ring around them. And this is just a handy power meter with backlit screen so we can view what's going on when feeding the LEDs. And speaking of power, this is how we're going to power the LEDs. It took me a while to figure this out after a lot of trial and error, but I landed on this. It's a 180 watt DC to DC converter. It takes 12 volts and changes it to 36 volts and 5 amps. And spoiler alert, it actually puts out more power than it says. We're also going to need a sturdy handle with some machine screws and interesting nuts on them, some thermal paste like you'd use on a computer, some clear vinyl from a roll, some heavy duty 12 gauge wire, and a bunch of common pine board. And since I want this to be able to run off of a standard house outlet, I ended up getting this power supply. It's a 12 volt 20 amp supply. We're also going to need an extension cord that can handle the 20 amps. And then we have a heavy duty connector type that will handle the amps as well. And it has a nice locking mechanism. And lastly, we have this weather sealed box that we're going to put our power supply in. Now that we have all our components, we can go ahead and start to put this together. We're going to start our focus on the heat sink and LEDs. We're going to take our thermal paste, put about a pea sized drop in each of the copper plates. Then we're going to take the LED chips and squish it on top of it, making sure that there's a nice thin layer coating the whole backside. We then take the screws that came with the heat sink and screw on the LED chips to affix them permanently in place. Now it's time to take some of that thick wire and start to attach it to the LED terminals. I add a little bit of flux, making sure I have the correct polarity, and then I go ahead and solder them into place. I decided to go ahead and attach the other LED in parallel because I think it's going to look a lot cleaner on the wiring job. Now it's time to install the reflectors, the lens is on top of that, and then the mount as well. And we just go ahead and screw that onto the heatsink. I've repeated the process on the other side. And now we have some pretty sweet looking lenses on top of those LEDs. But the next problem is, how are we going to power this thing? And oh boy, a little bit of a warning. Because I go a little bit in depth and share some of my mistakes because problems. I was having so many problems with these power supplies. And this is one of them. I ordered it, it had enough wattage, it had a nice cooling fan, big heatsink, it looked good, but the thing didn't work. Didn't power on, nothing happened. So I went ahead and swapped it for this one. It has a screen on it, has buttons. It looks like it's easier to use, easier to adjust. So I thought, hey, let's go ahead and set up a quick little circuit and try it out. 
plugged it in, and boom, the thing exploded, it broke. So I swapped it for a new one of the same type, which was probably a mistake looking back. But after doing some research, I found out about these things called thermistors or inrush current limiters. So I thought, hey, let's set it up with a thermistor and see if it turns on. And it did, then explode. And when I tried to put out the output, it actually made the LEDs turn on, which is progress. But it made a horrible buzzing sound and it wasn't putting out the correct power. But for whatever reason, I thought it was good enough and time to move on with the project. So it was time to start building the enclosure. So I cut out all the pieces I needed from the wood and I began to drill out all the holes that are gonna be for the air vents of the side walls. I then focused and began to drill and mark all of the holes for the inputs and outputs on the back panel of the flashlight. And with all the pieces drilled and cut out, it was time to sand everything nice and smooth. Then I took it over to the stain station where I just began to stain it with some towel and by hand. And most of you would probably use gloves for this part, but sometimes you're just in the moment and you forget about things like that until your hands are pretty much orange. And a day later, they were dry and I think they turned out great. These are gonna be the side panels. These pieces are gonna help hold in the heat sink. This is gonna help hold in the battery. And this is the back of the flashlight, which is gonna hold a bunch of the buttons and ports. This is gonna be the top panel, and you can see where the switch is gonna go. And this is the bottom. If you can see, I have two of these boards screwed in, which is gonna help hold the battery in place. It's time to start to put it together. I went ahead and installed the bad board, which I'll regret. Then I installed all the switches and ports to the back panel. And then I went ahead and attached the wires to the external power supply port. And then I screwed that into the box. And the back panel is looking great. Got the USB, the power switches, the charging port, and then the external power port as well. Time to put in the battery. So I went ahead and laid the battery down. I put this stuff called alien tape on the feet. I placed it down in its spot. And this is gonna add as a little bit of shock cushion and to help squeeze it into place, especially since I put more of it on the top panel, push it down really hard and screwed that in as well. And if you can see, the battery's not going anywhere, even if you drop this thing. I then went ahead and put on the side walls. I then took the thin pieces of wood that are gonna support the LED heatsink. I placed it where I want it to go and I screwed that into place to make it permanent. On the bottom of the heatsink, I put a strip of the alien tape. I then took the heatsink and I placed it on top of the small piece of wood I just put there. I built up a couple more layers of the tape on top of the heatsink and then I took the other piece of wood and I squished it down pretty hard and then I screwed it into place to make it permanent. Now it's time to install the switch and handle on the top panel. I put the switch into place, I placed a screw ring on top of it, and I tightened it down. I then took these interesting nuts with spiky bits on them, and I placed them into the holes I drilled for the handle, and then I proceeded to just smack them with a piece of wood. I then took the handle, I placed it on top, I inserted the machine screws, and then I tightened it down, and this handle isn't going to go anywhere. I went ahead and plugged in the switch on the top part screwed on the battery terminals, closed up the lid on the top and screwed it into place. I took some of the vinyl sheet and I began to cut out some rectangles of it that fit over the openings and I took some shorter screws and just screwed that down into place. And would you look at that? It looks like a final product except you wouldn't know that there's a garbage circuit board inside just waiting to be replaced with something. Because deep down inside, I knew there's a circuit board that made a horrible ringing sound and it only put out 2.5 amps when I was expecting it to put out 6 amps, so that's not even half of what I wanted. We needed to fix this. So for my first fix, I ended up finding this. It's a boost converter. It changes 12 volts to 24 volts at 10 amps. And I'm hoping if I incorporate this into the circuit, it's gonna make it easier for my other converter to boost up to the correct voltage and amperage. So I placed it in, I turned it on, and we tested it out. It does work, nothing explodes, and it's able to put out four amps instead of the measly 2.5. We're still pretty far off from the six amps that we're hoping for. This whole project's just becoming a super big headache. So many wires that keep adding so many different components. It's just becoming way too complicated and I'm just getting super frustrated and sad from it. I needed to take a step back and after a couple days, I landed on this. Another one of those boost converters, except this is the one I actually used. It's the 180 watt one. It changes 12 volts to 36 volts at five amps and it's only for running the LEDs in parallel. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. And Surprisingly, it puts out more power than it's rated, which is actually good in my situation. I also went ahead and picked up this power meter so we can actually see what's happening when powering on the LEDs. So with the new components, I set up a little test bench with the converter, the watt meter, and then the LEDs. And the last thing left to do is just to plug it in and see if it even works. Definitely a spark happening there. 
but it seems to be happy. Nothing exploded or popped and the lights are actually turning on. So it turns out that it's able to drive them. If we look at the power meter, we're getting 7.5 amps, 32 volts, and 240 watts. This thing is outperforming its own ratings, and it's even driving the LEDs beyond their maximum. I am so happy with this little thing. It has literally saved this flashlight project. So cool. Good stuff. So now it's time to actually undo a couple weeks worth of work, and that is by just cutting out the nasty squid of wires, removing the horrible circuit board that's supposed to be rated for 900 watts. <laughs> yeah, right. Bye bye I then salvaged the switch connectors because I have to reuse them, and I began to rewire up the circuit, which was so much simpler with so much less clutter, and I also tested it again with the watt meter to make sure that it still worked, and since it was working, I decided I wanted to incorporate the screen into the build. So I took the front panel, I laid it on top of it where I thought it would look nice, I took out the drill, and drilled in some holes that is going to let the screen shine through. And you can see, that's where the screen's going to go, and it lines up perfect. I then took some of the vinyl sheeting, I cut out a rectangle of it, I laid it over the opening, and I stapled it into place with my staple gun. And now there's a clear window with a little protector. I hot glued on a couple of pieces of wood on the side to hold it in place temporarily. Then I placed a long support beam across it, and I screwed it in place with some really long screws and a metal spacer. And it was on there nice and secure. I took some of this foam strip I had sitting around and I've started to build up a bunch of layers on the back of the watt meter. I unscrewed the back panel and then I screwed it down nice and tight to make sure it was secure. I then went around with the hot glue gun to really glue it in place. Now it's time to attach the converter. I took some more of the alien tape, I put a couple strips on it, I stuck it down where I wanted it, and then I put in some wood screws to really hold it down so it's not going to go anywhere. I connected the battery up again, added a final touch underneath the cover, Closed up the lid on the box again and screwed it all together. And would you look at that? The thing's finally together, works perfect, got the beautiful lenses in it. I am really happy I didn't just let this project be good enough. But there's still one more quick part to make, the external power supply. I took the extension cord, I cut it a third way through. On the prong side I added some fork connectors and I wired it up to the AC input on the supply. I took the other half of the extension cord with the plug side and I attached it to the DC out. I then cut off the plug side of the extension cord and I added on the heavy duty connector that plugs into the external power supply of the flashlight. I tightened everything down and we had our own little power supply. And the only thing left to do is to place the supply in this container. It has these places for the cords to go through. You just put the top on, snap it closed, I threw on a label, and now it's time to test it out. Simply plug it in any outlet and then you plug it into the flashlight and I have it wired up so that it bypasses the back switch and you only need to push the front switch to turn it on and this is just so it doesn't accidentally charge the battery or anything like that. And you're still able to use the USB chargers on the back. The only thing left to do now is let's take this thing outside and see what it can do. Normal flashlight and boom look at this thing. You can't even see the other flashlight. This thing is nuts. Look at this. Oh, hello. Looks like they wanted to be in my video. Look how bright this thing is. It just completely illuminates the forest. And we got these deer over here. And I hear some over here too. It is a foggy night. So this is with my big light on. This is with it off and in my hand right now is my brightest flashlight I had before. This one in my hand is like a thousand lumen. And this one I made is, I don't know, it's big. <laughs> it's like almost midnight and I'm just walking around the forest testing out. This is a massive flashlight, this thing is huge. This thing is pretty insane. I was looking at it when I was doing some jumping jacks in front of it. Now I have some massive like flash marks in front of my eyes. It's pretty much a floodlight you can bring with you. This thing is nuts.
So I'm inside right now. This is my small little handheld flashlight. And then this is <laughs> my new flashlight. And it completely lights up this room like absolutely crazy. Well, it's official. This thing is insane. This is definitely the brightest flashlight I have ever seen in person. The brightest flashlight I have ever used. This thing is wild. It's like pretty much carrying a car light with you or like a giant floodlight with you. This thing is awesome. It lights up the whole world around you. You can use it to like light up a room if you lose power or camping. This thing is a beast, but I am just so happy with how this thing turned out. I think it looks great, really durable. This thing is solid, made out of wood. I love working with wood and I do like how we added some extra utility like this little USB charger. And I like how it's able to run off of a house outlet as well. I think that's really handy, especially if you want to use this as like a studio light or something. But keep in mind, you do hear the fans because there is the fans in there because this thing gets pretty hot when you power it on. <laughs> no question about it. And another thing is this thing is pretty heavy, but that's kind of what you expect. It's totally doable. You can carry it around. I did for quite a while, but that's because of the giant battery in here. And I had to have such a big battery because I needed a battery able to put out around 15 to 20 amps to run these at full blast, which is what I'm doing right now. And I knew that if I had like a 10 amp hour battery, it wouldn't be able to do that. So I ended up getting this 20 amp one. If I do my calculations correctly, it should be able to run this light for about an hour on a full charge of this battery which is pretty good but that's also why i have uh, the house power outlet as well but i mean realistically when you use a flashlight like a handheld flashlight when you're walking around camping or something you usually don't have a flashlight on for an hour straight so this should last like a whole camping trip and you can also just go ahead and like charge it up by the little dc port as well which i think is sweet but yeah this thing is a lot of fun to use it just lights up the world around you but overall i'm just really happy with how this thing turned out i think it looks great it functions great it's super solid it's really useful and this thing is just generally awesome i mean come on it's like this massive flashlight that looks like it has giant eyes i mean come on what's not to love anyways i hope you enjoyed this video hopefully you learned something hopefully you just saw something cool or enjoyed yourself and i want to say thanks for stopping by everybody and i'll catch you on the next one